Hello and welcome. Today is Tuesday, the day before your test. Well, tomorrow is your test, so no stream tomorrow. Uh, we should be reviewing magnetism today. This will be the last day of magnetism. It's the last day of actual lectures, or at least content-wise. Um, we'll take our test. We'll start reviewing specifically only the units that's going to be covered on the AP test. And as you may have noticed, uh, LAUSD and I guess ECR are not going to open up school again so for the rest of, for the remainder of this semester therefore your final schedule uh, is not before the AP test but it will be on finals day uh, on uh, during finals week whenever the block is all right um, so uh, when we when we get closer to our actual finals week which is in June uh, we will review the uh, the units that are not covered in the AP test a little bit more, but uh, after tomorrow we'll be focus shifting our focus straight to just uh, the units that are going to be test were, that we're going to be tested on. All right, uh, the last thing that we have, the last thing that we have uh, is the Hall effect. effect whoa what happened to our stream is anyone still here there was yep um, so so this is the last bit uh, I'm glad you you read up on it <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, draw a quick circuit here we'll have a simple battery and um, we'll have our an ideal wire. Now instead of attaching any kind of uh, simple circuit element, let's put a metal plate here. And we have to draw this in 3D. So it is important that it is three-dimensional. Uh, so you can imagine this plate being inside some sort of uh, probe or you know a vernier sensor that you can use logger pro with so imagine this thing being uh, inside uh, a probe so our plate that I have in green And so you can imagine this green thing being right here in front and all the internals are all inside the probe. So the metal part is exposed. And also, crack if you turn in. Uh, what do you mean turn in question mark? I don't know what your question is. Uh, so, so this metal plate, of course, it's where? Am I to assume you did not turn it in? <laughs> uh, can we get a slash facepalm in chat, please? Slash facepalm in chat. Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that the flash facepalm? Now, what is that, Torben? <laughs> Red coat. What? All right. Anyway, um, you can watch yesterday's stream if you want. It's in the video section. Uh, here's our plate. And so let's go ahead and you know turn the switch on. So of course there has to be a switch of some kind. And then we just pull the lever down and turn the switch on, blah, blah, blah. Now it's on. All right, the, the charges will flow out and eventually get to here. OK. Ah, not like this. Very good, Nishank. Uh, all right. So, what we do first is, 
and of course you know uh, if it is a metal conducting uh, sheet uh, if I just have the circuit of course the charges will go through eventually it'll get to the other side and then kind of complete the circuit it's almost like a uh, it's almost like a short circuit if this if this material was nice and nice and conductive but of course any material technically has some sort of resistance right um, what is the resistance of the sheet well if we look at it in three dimensions right it is a rectangular prism Okay, so this metal plate is a rectangular prism and the current is coming in through this front face and it has to travel this length. Oh, let's not use L anymore. L is used way too much in this unit. What should we call this? Uh, let's call it X, I guess. Right? So, how do I figure out what the resistance is now? Well, resistance R is equal to rho times L divided by A. Okay? So, L would be X. Oops how long it has to go through, uh, how, how the length of the material. A is the cross-sectional area, and therefore A is the area of the face here. We can, we can do Z by Y. Let's say this is Z, lowercase z. This is Y, so YZ. Right? I think this is one of my honors physics questions. Um, so, of course, you know, in reality, there's going to be some sort of resistance, blah, 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 all that is great. Now, the point isn't to just find a resistance of a rectangular block is to use this. Let's go ahead and take this sensor, if you will, and take it next to a magnetic field. Let us assume that the magnetic field is going straight in, uh, straight downwards. So imagine being uh, next to a magnet with a north pole here, south pole there. This would send magnetic field out, out of the north so we are right there in front of the North Pole. Okay, so we have magnetic field downwards into, into the plane of this block. So here's this little charge that is coming out of the battery and it's right here. Okay, and it, it has a velocity. What's the direction or the direction of the initial velocity vector of this charge as it enters this green plane? Chat, what is the direction of the velocity vector initially? Hmm. While you think, let me go ahead and label this stuff. Um, where we turn in okay it's on canvas buddy just go to canvas right correct right is right so the charge has a direction the velocity vector uh, okay you can you, sh you can ask during the Q&A session I need to finish this up um, just look on canvas for yesterday um, so of course the velocity vector must be in the 
same direction as the current. So current is going to come out of the plus end, try to go into the minus end, so it has to be to the right. Okay? So notice how we have a charged particle. It is positive. It has a velocity vector to the right. And there's a magnetic field that is going downwards into the plane. If a charged particle is moving perpendicular to a nice magnetic field, what will happen to our charged particle? What does it experience? Well, there's a magnetic force on this charged particle. So which way is the magnetic force? Use your right hand rule number three, the force on a charged particle. Okay, you point your thumb to the right and your fingers are downwards and you'll see that your palm is upwards. So there's a force. Oops. There's a force. Let's use pink. There's a force that is this way. Right? So this means that you know our velocity vectors to the right the force is 90 degrees so we will start you know turning but our force vector uh, will turn the we still have momentum to the right I should say but our force vector will continue to turn our charge so that the charge doesn't keep going straight it eventually has a different trajectory it lands somewhere here Okay. So as, as charges keep coming out, it seems like this force keeps turning the charges and, and you start collecting charges on this side. Okay. By virtue of having more charges, more positive charges on that side of the plate, that means that this other side, the opposite side, is more negative relative to the other side. The magnetic field comes from this bar magnet. Okay, so by virtue of having positive charges on one side, the other side is negative. Now there's a difference in charges and so it's almost like having a row of positive charges on one side and a row of negative charges on the other. Where have you seen this before? Ooh, where have you seen this before? Well, it's almost like parallel plates. Yes, very good. Parallel plate capacitors. And therefore, there's now an electric field produced by the separation of charges. And the electric field is along the plane of this metal plate and strategically it happens to be the 90 degrees to the magnetic field. So there's an electric field, let's use black for the electric field, from the positive to the negative. So there's an electric field this way. So now what? Well, as we start building up our charges, our electric field grows. I mean, as soon as you get that first charge on that other side, there's automatically there's an electric field. It's pretty weak, so uh, it starts to build up. Um, but charges keep landing on that side as you parabolically or, or sorry, circularly go pew, pew, pew. Now why, why do consecutive charges uh, why do consecutive charges land further and further out? That's a very interesting question, right? And that's due to the growing electric field that is happening within our platform here, okay? 
So now look at the charge, this positive charge, and do an FBD on your charge. This is this is the last day of lecture, so we have to kind of combine everything we've learned ever, <laughs> from kinematics to to dynamics, uh, uh, all together now. It all comes together. So here's our positive charge. Okay, recall that due to the magnetic field, there's a magnetic force FB that is pointing this way. I'm drawing it in the same same uh, plane. So. Yeah, review strings. We'll call this the magnetic force FB. Okay, and then there's another force, the electric force. When a charged particles a charged particle is in an electric field, there's an electric force on that particle. Which way is the electric force on a charged particle? You don't draw velocity in an FBD, buddy. Uh, the electric force is plus to minus. Yes, very good, AP1 student. Uh, hmm. The troll face. But thank you for asking. I'm sure someone uh, probably asked in their minds. Uh, so if FV is that away, then the electric force must be this way from plus to minus uh, half electric um, if I if I drew it straight you can basically see how uh, the uh, magnetic force and the electric force are now against each other oops there we go against each other right and so as the electric field builds up you get more and more electric field which uh, means that there's a uh, the force is no longer making it go in a circle, but instead you get these parabolic arcs. Eventually, the electric field can match the magnetic field, and the current will uh, just go straight, pew, like so. Now this is, it's in three dimensions. Um, I mean, if there was mg, there, it's like stuff. It is uh, technically it isn't negligible, really. These are charges we're talking about, and g is ten to the negative eleven, so it's definitely negligible. It's just uh, it is on the plane also, so in the y-axis it wouldn't matter anyway. Yeah. So we're completely ignoring the actual y-axis. We're looking. Uh, this is technically the z-axis. Z hat. Actually, I should draw it um, this way. There, that's Z hat. Z hat. Remember, uh, the hat is just a unit vector. It tells you the direction of the axis in centrally. Or uh, it's technically, it's K. You guys use I J K, so K hat. Uh, I'll go ahead and use Z hat because Z is way better than K. I don't know why, but it just is. All right. Uh, so this is a, uh, this is you know uh, this is where the Hall effect comes from. It's the idea of this building electric field that also pushes the charges the other way. What is our magnetic force on our charge? What is the magnetic force? Chat. How do I find the magnetic force on a charge that has a velocity v moving? perpendicular to a magnetic field. QVB, very good, Ryan Davis. Q times V times the magnetic field, B. QV cross B, ooh, we got a cross product. Uh, but as I said, it was already 90 degrees or perpendicular, so you can just say QVB. Um, and then we have the electric force. Chat, what is the electric force? on a charged particle moving in an electric field. Nice uniform electric field. It is QE, QE, yay. All right. So our, uh, our QVB must equal the QE.
Okay. Now this velocity is special. Uh, it is the drift velocity. Okay. We we'll call that um, things actually move like molasses. Um, We just push the charges in front of us. The current travels very quickly, but the actual particles don't move that quickly. Um, and so we give this E a special name. It's the Hall Electric Field, EH. And the Hall Electric Field is equal to the drift velocity times the magnetic field. All right, uh, and so if I wanted to know what the magnetic field is, we can figure out what our if we can figure out what our electric field is divided by the drift velocity, blah blah blah, and we should be able to figure out what our uh, magnetic field is, right? Uh, for reference, let's go ahead and write down the equation for the current. Well, we can put a current sensor in here. Um, with our with our power supply here we can put our current sensor and measure the actual current and the current based on drift velocity what is the current equal to well it's equal to some sort of number uh, you can do rho if you want times the charge um, times the area a times the drift velocity. NQAVD, very good AP1 student. Um, and so we can figure out our, our drift velocity that way. By placing all of this stuff inside this probe here, we have created a magnetic field sensor. A magnetic, this is the essence of a magnetic field sensor, right? Uh, and this is where I segue into pulling out my magnetic field sensors and Logger Pro in class and then go tell you to do your Slinky Lab, but Slinky Lab is canceled. Uh, uh, but anyway, so that is all. So that's the, it's, you know, that's the essence of um, the Hall effect. It allows us to find... Um, It allows us to find this. Whoa, ad block has updated. Whatever. It allows us to find the magnetic field itself. Uh, the Hall voltage would be equal to the current times the magnetic field divided by an ED. Uh, here's some equations if you if you want. Um, it appears that. VH is equal to I, the current times the magnetic field. Divided by the charge carrier uh, N times the charge uh, times, uh, let's use little d. Uh, and little d would be the thickness. Oh, I used y, didn't I? Uh, we'll use y. d is equal to y. Right here. The thickness. Chat pause due to scroll. Yeah, well, I don't know what just happened. So we're just talking about Avatar. 
All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, so we are pretty much done with magnetism. Um, and right now you should go go to the website and download the unit eight review. Start doing that. Unit eight review. Um, it looks something like this. And there's some classic questions. Um, you can find you can find the answers by typing in the year. So this is 1973 AP Physics C ENM test question number three. This is a very good one. So I'll start I'll start you off with this first one, and then you guys can continue and do the rest. Um, so this I actually asked this on a on a quiz once. Yikes! So we have a ramp that's shape of a U. Uh, if you look at our magnetism magnetism notes we actually started off with a u-shaped thing but it was on the same plane yeah it's from 1973 and the ramp has an angle theta okay and there's a bar that can slide down Lie down. Uh, we also have a uniform magnetic field going straight downwards into the window. So I think you can figure out where we're going with this. As the bar slides down due to gravity, right, uh, we have an increasing amount of flux that goes through our window. And since the flux is changing, we start getting uh, current flowing into our system. And, and when the current is flowing, we create our own magnetic field, yada, 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 and so on and so on. So uh, in part A, it says, uh, show, a, a show on the diagram the direction of the current in the sliding bar. So we'll just do a couple, like, just, let's just see if we can do part A and, and a couple more before we end it. Um, find I, or the direction of I uh, in the bar. Is 1973 ENM number three. Okay. All right. Oh, we already have one student who finished it. Yikes. Yeah. Um, so our flux, right? If we if you look at it from the face, if you look at it from the face. Okay. Uh, and you can see your notes there's some sort of velocity this way um, the magnetic field is going into the face so that's circle with an X and because we're moving to the right the area increases and since the area increases we are getting more X's going into the window therefore we have to produce our own magnetic field that is fighting the change by producing or uh, by producing circle with dots that way we can fight these extra amount of X's that are about to come in so if I want dots in the inside of our window if you use right hand rule number one you'll see that your thumb has to point uh, in this view in this helicopter view your thumb has to point up um, as the your, as the curl of your fingers come out uh, if your thumb is pointing up you get magnetic field that curls around going out of the page on the inside and then it goes around and into the page on the outside okay. therefore the direction of the current must be this way hey that was easy part A of course it's part A part A is the easiest typically it gets harder as you go on uh, depend, uh, denoting by V the instantaneous speed with which the bar is sliding down the incline, determine an expression for the magnitude of the current in the bar. Oh, now it's getting harder. Um, so you have to do some FBDs and some other stuff. Uh, so I'll leave you with an FBD. Uh, so if I did an FBD on this on this bar here, 
of course we have mg that is straight down and mg mg uh, sine theta is pulling us downwards so this is theta mg sine theta is pulling us downwards and the normal force is perpendicular to the ramp okay now mg pulls us downwards um, what about the magnetic force is there a magnetic force oh. Well, if you want to figure out what the magnetic force is, envision just a charged particle inside of our rod here. This charged particle has a velocity vector that is upwards. It has a magnetic field going into the page. So velocity up, thumb up. Now we're using right hand rule number three, the force on a charged particle. Velocity vector up, thumb up, fingers go into the page, and this gives you a force F that is to the left. This is the magnetic force. So that means that there's a magnetic force that is actually pulling us up the ramp. The fingers represent the external magnetic field, not the one you're creating, not the induced. The force on a charged particle is based on the external magnetic field, not its own. Similar to how objects experience gravity due to the external gravitational field from the other masses. All right, so we now have a magnetic force that is opposite to mg sine theta. How do we find the magnetic force? Well, the magnetic force is equal to BLV. No, that's voltage. Uh, what's the force? Uh, let's see, it's QVB, but I want it in terms of in terms of current uh, ILB. Or I, I use bill, like F bill. That's the way to remember it. Uh, like, you know, F bill. <laughs> What did Bill Nye do? I don't know, but have him. Um, it is technically a cross product, so so you have to make sure that your B is 90 degrees. One way to ignore the cross product is to use the value of B that is already perpendicular to everything, right? So notice how in our window, B is not going straight in, our window is slanted so the amount of B that actually goes in 90 degrees to the surface is if this is B what is the vector here chat what's what is this uh, let's use a different color what's this blue vector which represents a vector component of the magnetic field B uh, ooh. It's almost like doing the ramp thing. Look, I've drawn it so that it's uh, so that you can you can equate the two, right? So uh, imagine this being the triangle for your mg vector, right? When we said this is theta, the angle at the top for mg was theta here. Now you can look at it as vertical angles. B is going straight in, kind of like mg. And the vector we want is this one. And vertical angles are congruent, so this is theta. So the amount of magnetic field that actually goes in is B times cosine of theta. So that's what this is. This is actually B cosine theta. All right. So uh, work on this, study, study, study. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's a pleasure. This is, you know, this is this is it. You've been through two years of physics. This is the last bit of physics. The Hall effect is we're going to learn from here on out. You just got to put things together. And every time you look out through the window, you should see FBDs everywhere. 
why is a bird flying well it's because mg is pulling it down but there's a lift force upwards and its thrust vector is pointing forwards and the drag force is back the drag force grows as the velocity grows i'll see you next time